It's Vice President Kamala Harris up against Governor Glenn Youngkin of Virginia. Today on Political Access, we're going to go through this hypothetical 2024 matchup. So let's get started. Safe states are over a 10-point margin, likely 5 to 10 points, lean under 5 points, and tilt 1 point or less. So how do I see this one going? Well, I do think Kamala Harris is probably a weaker candidate, and I think the reasons are fairly obvious. She does come off as inauthentic, consultant-tested, I think she's viewed as ineffective as vice president. She's done that inappropriate laugh a number of times, but the establishment Democrats absolutely adore her. That's another issue, but I don't think she's completely as weak as it might seem. On the other side, Glenn Youngkin, he's governor of Virginia. It's a fairly blue state at this point, but he did pull off the win there. He tried to bridge the coalition of the Trump base and the establishment, and I guess he's done a decent job at doing so. He's moderately popular in Virginia, but it's only been a year. He's got some time left. They could easily go down and he could become unpopular. Or maybe he goes in the other direction and becomes some kind of legendary figure. Personally, I think he is also a little bit consultant-tested. Not as much as Kamala Harris. Same with his authenticity. I think it's only okay, but it seems to have worked for him, so I have to consider that. I think Glenn Youngkin would have more appeal in some of the suburbs where they were coming out to vote against Donald Trump. That would help him a little bit there. Maybe the suburbs are too far gone to win in 2024. And of course, Kamala Harris is going to do really well on the coasts, a lot of those wealthier, highly educated Democratic areas. So with all that said, let's get started here in Alaska. That I have as a safe for Glenn Youngkin. Probably low double digits. Trump won it by 10. It's still a moderately red state unless you have a terrible Republican candidate running, somebody like Sarah Palin. But I think Glenn Youngkin could get this over double digits. Hawaii, on the other hand, is going to be very safe for Kamala Harris, as it would be with any Democrat. To the West Coast, Washington, Oregon, California will be safe for Kamala Harris. Would Glenn Young can do better than Donald Trump in Washington and Oregon and maybe even California? Yeah, he probably could do one to three points better in those states. Maybe he could get it within 15 in Oregon, so marginally better than Donald Trump but not enough to get it out of the safe column. Let's go to Nevada. This is a state that would be competitive. It's trending slightly toward the right. It does border to California, where Kamala Harris was senator from. However, I think Glenn Youngkin would probably have the right kind of mix to actually win this state. I have it as a tilt for Youngkin. He would do just not terrible enough in Clark County. He'd get close in Washoe. I think he would win it by under one point. Idaho and Utah, safe for Youngkin. Arizona. This is a state that's drifted away from the Republicans. Trump won it the first time, lost it the second time. In this matchup, I think Glenn Young can, could take some of that coalition he pieced together in Virginia to be able to win in Arizona by a couple of points. I have it as a lean for Youngkin. He wouldn't do horrible in the suburbs. Most of the red Trump counties would come out for Youngkin since he actually did do better than Trump in Virginia and a lot of those red rural counties. I think that would apply to a state like Arizona, and he would win that by a lane margin. Montana and Wyoming, safe for Yunkin. Colorado, I think this would be under 10, probably still high single digits. And Harris would win this by a likely margin. Let's go under Colorado to New Mexico. This will be a low to mid single digit win for Kamala Harris. I have it as a lean, probably four and a half points, maybe five. I think Glenn Youngkin would have a little bit more appeal here. He wouldn't be as off-putting as Donald Trump. People don't want to come out to vote against him. And some of the weakness of Kamala Harris would reduce her turnout. Let's go up to North Dakota and South Dakota. Safe for Youngkin. Nebraska, at large, safe for Youngkin. The second district, after redistricting, it got a little bit redder. But this is still a district that is mostly blue. It has Omaha. It's fairly urban and suburban. I think Kamala Harris would still win this by a tilt margin. Kansas, safe for Youngkin. Oklahoma, safe for Youngkin. Texas, this will be a likely for Glenn Youngkin. This is another state similar to Virginia, where I think Youngkin would do well enough. I think the suburbs would be more okay voting for Glenn Youngkin. The red counties, those margins would stay high for Youngkin. He'd probably win Williamson County, which is the suburbs of Austin. That's trended toward the Democrats, but I think Glenn Youngkin would do pretty well in Texas. He would probably win that by seven or eight points. Let's go up to Minnesota. This will be likely for Kamala Harris, probably just over five points, maybe up to six. This is a tricky state. There's a lot of legacy Democrats there that have not yet flipped over to the Republicans. Maybe Glenn Youngkin is the guy to do it, but I just haven't seen it yet. It seems like Minnesota keeps voting for the Democrat in most of those counties. There's a lot of rural counties there. 
that are still light red or light blue and haven't flipped yet. And I would guess enough of them would still vote for Harris. Twin Cities are going to come out hard for Harris. Youngkin's probably going to do okay in the suburbs. It would still come out to a relatively comfortable win for Harris. Let's go under Minnesota to Iowa. That will be a likely for Glenn Youngkin. Probably high single digits. I would say about 9 points. It could even get up to 10. But I don't think the Democrats are really going to be competitive here in Iowa anymore. And Glenn Youngkin will have this one easily. Let's go under Iowa to Missouri. Safe for Glenn Youngkin. Arkansas and Louisiana, also very safe for Glenn Youngkin. Let's go to Wisconsin. This is one of those states where it's a very tough call. It does seem to be trending slightly toward the right. I think Glenn Youngkin is a reasonable fit for Wisconsin. As I've said in some other states like Texas and Arizona, the coalition Glenn Youngkin brought together in Virginia, I think that would be enough for him to win this state. I have it as a tilt for Youngkin. He'd get wiped out in Dane and Milwaukee counties, but most of the suburban counties would vote for him. A lot of the rural red counties, they would also come out for him. He could actually win this by more than a point. I could see it getting up to two and a half points. But since I'm not exactly sure of the trends yet, I will keep it at a tilt for Youngkin. Illinois, safe for Harris. Michigan, it's really tough to say what Michigan would do at this point. We know it would be close. I don't think Harris has a ton of appeal there. I think Glenn Youngkin has some appeal. But there's a lot of blue vote there, and I still think enough of them would just vote for Kamala Harris. And Glenn Youngkin would come up a little bit short. I have it as a lean for Harris, but only one to two points. Indiana, safe for Youngkin. Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, safe for Youngkin. Let's go to Florida. This is probably going to be the first election to confirm if Florida is no longer a swing state on a presidential level. I think Glenn Youngkin would actually do fairly well here. He'd get good turnout in the counties he needs to. He wouldn't get completely wiped out in the blue counties. I actually have this as a likely for Glenn Youngkin, but just barely over five points. And we'll see exactly what those trends are like in a couple of years. Let's go above Florida to Georgia. This is trended away from the Republicans, no question about that. The Atlanta suburbs have went pretty hard to the left. And Trump very nearly lost it last time. I think Glenn Youngkin, even though it would be four years later, he would have enough appeal in those suburbs to come back a couple of points. He'd get good enough turnout in the rural counties, and Glenn Youngkin would win Georgia by a tilt margin. South Carolina, safe for Youngkin. North Carolina, that will be a lean for Youngkin, probably three to five points. Let's jump over to Ohio, that will be likely for Youngkin. This is pretty much a red state at this point. I don't think Harris is going to do a lot here. Glenn Youngkin, he would talk a big game to the blue-collar workers, as Harris would as well. It's probably going to fall flatter coming from Harris than it would be from Youngkin. Nobody's going to get those voters to turn out like Donald Trump. But having said all that, Youngkin would still win this at least by six or seven points. Let's go next door to West Virginia. That's a very red state. It neighbors Virginia. It would be very safe for Glenn Youngkin. Let's go up to Maine. At large, this I have as a likely for Kamala Harris. The first district, that is much, much bluer. That will be over 10 points safe for Harris. The second district, that is the district that has voted for Donald Trump. It's trended pretty far toward the right. I do have Glenn Youngkin winning that just barely over 10 points, so it's a safe for him there. You might be able to talk me down to a likely on that one, because Glenn Youngkin in 24 is not Donald Trump in 2016. But I don't think there's any question that Youngkin would win that district. Let's go to New Hampshire. Close call for me. I have it as a tilt for Kamala Harris. On a presidential level, it just seems like Republicans haven't had much success here lately. I think Kamala Harris is kind of weak, but again, this gets more into the higher educated, more coastal elite part of the country, even though New Hampshire is the reddest state in that area. I'm going to say Harris still wins it by under one point. Vermont, New York, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, and Washington, D.C. all safe for Kamala Harris. Now, is there a possibility one of those states could get under 10 points if it was a great red wave? Then, yeah, I could see maybe one of those states getting under 10. It would either be Delaware, New Jersey, Connecticut, or Rhode Island. I think if this were 20 or 25 years ago, the margins in some of these states would be a lot closer. But as it is, Harris would still win them all by over 10 points. Let's go to Pennsylvania. Would Glenn Youngkin be more palatable in the suburbs of Philadelphia? Yes, he would. Would it be enough to overcome whatever margins Harris would do in Philadelphia, in Pittsburgh? That I'm not sure of. It's very close for me. I could almost flip a coin here, similar to a couple of these other states, but I ended up giving it to Harris by a tilt margin. You could make a case for Youngkin winning it. I understand that. I just went the other way and slightly gave it to Harris. 
And finally, the last state is Glenn Youngkin's home state of Virginia. It has drifted toward the Democrats over the last 20 years. We all know that. Glenn Youngkin is the governor. But voting for governor is not the same as voting for president. The turnout would be higher. I think that would hurt Youngkin a little bit. And I think it would take a lot for him to actually flip Virginia and win it. It used to be a reliably red state. Youngkin would be their best chance to flip it. But I still think Kamala Harris would probably win it by four points. So I have to give it to her with a lean. Just not seeing Young can be able to flip it or even get it super close. But a four-point loss, that's not a bad day for Glenn Youngkin. And that is my map. And that would result in 278 electoral votes for Glenn Youngkin, 260 for Kamala Harris. Glenn Youngkin would actually win this election narrowly. So there's a lot of unknowns here, of course. We don't know who these candidates would pick as the running mate. The national environment, that would affect things by a few points either way. And who knows how these candidates would do on the campaign trail. Which issues they would run on, which issues they would run away from. I think Len Youngkin would do well enough if he was campaigning across the country. He'd be able to bring back some of those establishment Republicans that ran away from Donald Trump. There would be some very hard right Republicans that would not come out for him. But I think there'd be more hard left Democrats that would not come out for Kamala Harris. She also tries to straddle the line between the progressive and the moderate establishment Democrat. I think Len Youngkin does a better job. Kamala Harris does come off as a little bit too much like Hillary Clinton, too much loved by the establishment. It just doesn't connect authentically with people on the ground floor. So I think Youngkin would do a little bit better, but it is anyone's game here. Who knows what the turnout would actually be? It'd be a close race, though. You can make a case in four or five of these states on some of the margins. You could even flip a couple more of these. I thought some were extremely close. But let me know in the comments, do you mostly agree with this map, or do you disagree with a lot of this map? Either way, let me know down below. And on your way out, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.